Welcome everybody. Thank you very much. It's glorious to be here and glorious to see so many assembled. And those we see assembled and we are only seeing with our, our mortal vegetable eye. If Blake, I won't say if Blake were here because Blake is here. Indeed, he's everywhere now. And there are vast throngs here, I think, among the immortals, delighting at this moment in time. We were asked to just find a couple of passages that were inspirational or numinous or determinative for us as writers. So I got two both from the great poem Jerusalem, not the song we sing, which is appended to the poem Milton, but the long prophetic epic, which speaks directly to our time, both of its tragedy and irony, but also of great hope, when finally Albion will wake from the bad dream of his imperialism and the bad dream of his oppression and from the cruelty of the mills and will awake to love again. That's what that poem is about. So here is what Blake said, trembling, as he considered the task that had been given to him by the immortals to and by Christ himself. So this is Blake's personal invocation to the great prophecy of England's fall and her recovery. Trembling, I sit day and night. My friends are astonished at me. I should think they certainly were <laughs> astonished at him. Uh, yet they forgive my wanderings. Now here's the key. I rest not from my great task to open the eternal worlds, to open the immortal eyes of man inwards into the worlds of thought. The eternal worlds and the immortal eyes are all assembled here. Yours are the immortal eyes, if you'll let Blake open them. The eternal worlds are in your bosom. So he goes on. To open the immortal eyes of man inwards into the worlds of thought, into eternity, ever expanding in the bosom of God, the human imagination. The bosom of God the human imagination, equivalent terms in Blake's world. And then he invokes Christ. O Saviour, pour upon me thy spirit of meekness and love. Annihilate the selfhood in me. Be thou all my life. I sometimes have my fellow priests in the Church of England say to me, how can you be so deeply into Blake? Isn't he a bit weird and like, you know, esoteric? And I just show them this prayer. And I say, if that isn't a prayer we should all be saying, then none of us should be here. O oh, Saviour, pour upon me thy spirit. However, although Christ is his muse in Jerusalem, Blake has a severe word and a joyful word to say to the church. And I want to conclude what I say, as it were, preaching to myself. <laughs> and my fellow members of an established church, these prophetic words of Blake, which I thank God the church is now, I think, at last, after 191 years, beginning to hear. This is what Blake says to the Christians in Jerusalem. I know of no other Christianity and of no other gospel than the liberty, both of body and mind to exercise the divine arts of imagination. Imagination, the real and eternal world of which this vegetable universe is but a faint shadow and in which we shall live in our eternal imaginative bodies when these vegetable bodies are no more. It's an honor to me to honor nine feet down that vegetable body, which was once William Blake. But it's a far greater joy to me to know that his eternal and imaginative body is alive and with us and working through his poetry in all of you. Thanks be to God. Oh. Uh -huh.